Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. In 2015, Kawasaki launched the Ninja H2R. It is the fastest and the most powerful production motorcycle in the world. Kawasaki Ninja H2R and H2 are the only production motorcycles to have a supercharged engine. Do you know what the term supercharged means? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. In this video, we will learn what a supercharger is, why we need it, and some of its types. We all know that the engine develops power by burning an air-fuel mixture. Hence, for increasing the power output, more fuel has to be combusted during each cycle of engine operation. Since the engine burns the fuel in a specific air-fuel ratio, more air has to be added when you want to add more fuel. At normal operating conditions, the air enters the engine at atmospheric pressure. If the pressure of the intake air increases, the density of the air also increases. Thus, more air will get inducted into the engine. More the air, more the fuel, resulting in greater combustion and greater power. This can be achieved by using a supercharger. A supercharger is a device that supplies more air into the engine. It pressurizes the intake air to a greater pressure than the atmosphere for boosting the engine power. A supercharger is driven mechanically by the engine by means of a belt, gear, chain, or a shaft. As it is connected to the engine, it can respond immediately without delay. Based on the method by which air is transferred, superchargers can be classified into two main types, positive displacement superchargers and dynamic compressor superchargers. Positive displacement superchargers supply an equal amount of air at all conditions. Here, the volume of air supplied to the engine will be constant at all engine speeds. The main types of positive displacement superchargers are the roots type and the twin screw type. Let's start with the roots type supercharger. This type of supercharger was first patented in 1860 and was initially used to pump water in the mines. And now it's being used in two-stroke cycle Detroit diesel engines. The roots type supercharger consists of two identical rotors with meshing lobes. The rotors of the supercharger are driven by the crankshaft of the engine and due to the pressure difference created by the rotation of the rotors, the air enters at the top. Because of the little clearance between the rotors, the air travels across the space found between the lobes and then leaves the supercharger at the bottom. This type of supercharger is usually placed on top of the engine which in turn adds weight. This is a disadvantage of the roots type supercharger. The next type of supercharger is a twin screw type. This type of supercharger is also known as Lysholm supercharger. It consists of two rotors which are radially symmetrical but have different profiles on their lateral surfaces for meshing. Of these two screw-shaped rotors, one acts as the male part and the other acts as the female part. The air enters the supercharger at one side, gets compressed in between the meshing rotors and leaves at the other side. Then the compressed air is sent into the intake manifold of the engine. If the screws of this supercharger is not manufactured precisely, it could lead to a large noise production. Now, let's move on to the next type, dynamic compressor supercharger. This type of superchargers supply more air into the engine by accelerating the air to a greater speed. The most commonly used dynamic compressor supercharger is the centrifugal supercharger. A centrifugal supercharger consists of an impeller which is driven by the engine. The impeller is placed inside a housing that has an opening in the center for letting air in and an outlet for discharging the air. When the engine runs, it drives the impeller. The air entering at the center of the housing gets accelerated because of the centrifugal force created by the rotation of the impeller. Thus, the accelerated air moves radially outward and leaves the supercharger at the outlet. Then, this compressed air enters the intake manifold of the engine. This centrifugal supercharger is more efficient than the other types. All these types of superchargers supply intake air with increased pressure. As the pressure increases, temperature also increases. This could lead to some other problems. Increased temperature inside the engine cylinder may ignite the air-fuel mixture spontaneously even before the initiation of spark. This results in uneven combustion and we call this problem as knocking. To avoid this, superchargers usually use an intercooler for cooling the air before it enters into the engine. An intercooler is basically a heat exchanger with a group of tubes which can carry cooled air or water. When the air from the supercharger approaches the intercooler, it loses its temperature. The usage of a supercharger is not without disadvantages. As they rely on engine for functioning, they draw power from it. Because of this, the efficiency of the engine drops up to 20%. In order to avoid the loss in efficiency, turbochargers were developed and that's a video for another day. Well, that's it guys. Hope you've understood how superchargers work and we'll meet again in the next one. Until then, bye.